Today I have a 2004 Subaru Outback Legacy stereo in the shop for hieroglyphics in the display. I'm going to show you how to take care of that. And I found myself on these repair videos saying this is one of my favorite radios. Again, this is one of my favorite radios. They're favorite for many reasons. We're going to need a, a, a small flathead screwdriver, of course soldering equipment possibly some components depending on what we find inside and a small Phillips screwdriver. We're gonna disassemble this to get to the problem. Uh, we have a full library removal guides if you need help with removing the stereo and so on. But we have two little tabs across the back here and we're gonna go underneath the black tab and lift it up over the metal one and as it lifts up we're gonna try and continue to pull the face forward so it doesn't snap back into place. And we're going to work our way around replacing, uh, excuse me, releasing these little tabs. You can see that the flathead screwdriver fits right in there and pushes, uh, pushes the tab up and sort of releases it. Now what we need to do is take this face off uh, to get to some screws to disassemble this. But there's also two connectors on this face that go into the motherboard that's right here on the bottom, which we have upside down now. And uh, these two connectors need to match up when this radio goes back on. So the face has to come straight off so that we don't mess these connectors up. Now we got that all loose. It comes straight off. Now here are the two connectors I had mentioned. Uh, uh, one here and one here. This is on the front face. We're not going to need to use this anymore, but we're going to set it aside. And the they mate to these connectors here on the front of the... Uh, stereo unit. So when it comes to putting this face back on last, uh, we're going to line it right up so that all the tabs, you can see when it lines up, it's just a, all the way around and then you'll just snap the face on. The connectors will mate up and that will allow you to uh, put it in the car and test it. Okay. Now next we're going to use our small Phillips screwdriver. Uh, there are several screws that hold the CD mech in place. We have to take the CD mech out of the way to get to the motherboard here. Uh, it just so happens the front screw here on the right side of the car stereo is the only black screw in this radio so we're going to make sure that one sits to the side. The rest of the radios in this radio there are two styles. Um, we're going to remove two from the side here that look like they're holding the CD mechanism in place and come over to the opposite side and we have two more screws these are all Phillips securing the CD mechanism in place on the sides we're going to remove these screws and then we're going to set this up because we have two more actually four more screws here in the front we're going to remove these four screws in the front uh, again if you need help with other removals or looking for other repairs do it yourself uh, how to install, checking speakers, troubleshooting, and so on, see the website. Uh, if you can't find what you're looking for there, please send us an email, put your question in the uh, subject line so we can get a quick look at it. Now we've removed all the screws off the face here, but it will not remove, but it has released it, the uh, CD mechanism. So we're going to gently lift the CD up, should release, there we go, and we're going to lift it to, to the one side because we have a ribbon cable here this white ribbon cable now the ribbon cable plugs into the CD mech at a connector here and it plugs into the motherboard here uh, I can disconnect it here at the CD but I find since we're working on this board I don't care to have this ribbon cable uh, mixing around so we're going to get a good hold on it down about in the center of it this connector will pull straight up uh, you can see that there's a blue line on it when it comes back to putting this connector in place we're going to line it right up, see the blue line, and then we're going to push it right down into the socket. Make sure it sits snugly, the blue line disappears, the connector's back in socket when we go to put this back together. Now we're going to set the CD mech to the side. And we're going to continue with our Phillips screwdriver. We're going to start on the motherboard and start right in the center for this metal piece that goes across the front that we couldn't remove and remove this one screw right in the center here. These are a second type of screw. These screws tend to have a little washer on them. There are six of them here on the motherboard. And we're going to set that face off to the side. Now we have five more screws. We have one in the front on one side here that we're going to need to remove. Again, this is another one of those screws with the washers on them. We're going to remove the one on the left side 
I'm going to keep these screws all together here. Now we have one along the back on the left. We also have three across the side here that go into this uh, heat sink here to hold the transistors down in order to uh, dissipate heat. We're not going to have to worry about those three. We'll get to the screw that secures that bracket in place. And we have a third one in the back here. Now this takes care of all six here in the uh, motherboard and I have learned when it, every time I have put this board back together I put all the screws back in it and forgot to put this piece back on for the one screw that goes in. So just remind you this screw here that one goes last with the front cover. Now we're going to move over to the side where I mentioned the heat sink and the three transistors and there is a screw on the outside of the case that secures the heat sink that the three transistors are secured to so we're going to remove this screw. Along the back here, we have several more screws. One secures the cable, one secures the antenna jack, but we also have two more outside ones. And we are going to remove these, and these match some of the original ones we started taking out of the uh, silver screws. We have one on the left and one on the right. Now, you're, at, you're probably wondering, we've gotten to this point, what is causing the hieroglyphics? Well, the board is going to lift right out now with all the screws removed and we're going to set that to the side and we're going to come back. Now what we are looking at here is a very common problem. I have not seen the schematics on this radio. The reason why I say I love this radio is because I found a problem with it without schematics and I've seen this enough times to know what the problem is what, without needing the schematics. So you wonder what are we looking at here? What we have here is the main motherboard, uh, all the inputs, outputs, the front connectors here and so on. But we also have a capacitor here. capacitor here. It acts as a battery. Now I've already been through this radio, cleaned it up and repaired it to bench test it to make sure that it works. Now what, when I opened this up originally, there was a black smudge down underneath this component for this leg here. Now to give you an idea of what we're looking at here, we do have several components down here in this thing. And I have tried to make a drawing of what we're looking at here. Again, we have the uh, component here, which will be here. And if you look down on the board as well, there's a little transistor along with two resistors. Now, I put together a drawing here. And this is a drawing of the problem area we, I just pointed out on the motherboard. This is the capacitor. This is a... Uh, device that is, has a polarity to it so it has to go back into the circuit in the same position. Uh, we're going to remove this capacitor. Uh, in many cases we're going to remove these two resistors. These two resistors are each 1K resistors. They are in parallel for a 500 ohm value and we have a transistor over here. Now the problem like I mentioned normally find is th this capacitor acts like a battery because you've seen when batteries sit in equipment too long it gets corrosion. So you will find corrosion usually all around in this area. And you're going to remove these components, you're going to clean the circuit board up. And then after that happens you're going to take a very close look at this here. What this is is a uh, circuit board trace that's on the circuit board and because of the corrosion in this area here causes this trace to deteriorate and get eaten. So you should with your meter from this transistor or this spot here measure from here to over here or for a continuity of zero ohms or you can measure from this transistor uh, connection here to this side of the resistors which are in parallel and you should read 500 ohms. If you don't read 500 ohms there's an open trace. I've seen the trace open here. I've seen the trace open under the transistor. Usually when it opens up along this top bend here I put a small wire in across to connect all these and it brings it all back. If the break is underneath the transistor you can't put a wire under the transistor because this is surface mount so I usually put a jumper from this point over to here so that this works. This will take care of the hieroglyphics problem that is with the stereo. So we've gone through and we have cleaned this board all up and I don't know if you can see it real clearly or not but the resistors have been soldered back in um, and uh, we have the transistor in. I do have a jumper in there with a piece of wire that you can't see that goes from the uh, top of the uh, two resistors over to the uh, transistor there. So this is what's taking care of the 
hieroglyphics problems with a Subaru uh, Outback and Legacy stereos. Uh, if this video has been helpful, uh, please thumbs up. If you have questions, you're welcome to email questions. Questions should have the uh, subject line with your question. Make it easier for us to get back to you. Again, hope this video has been helpful. Please subscribe and thank you for watching.